Hey everybody, it's Nintuba64 here. Welcome to part 4 of my Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. In the last episode, we completed the Eastern Palace, and in this episode, we are going to talk to Shahashra. If you can't tell, I love that name. Actually, it's really annoying to pronounce. And he's essentially saying, good job, um, since you beat it, I'm going to give you uh, boots, and they're going to let you move not slow, a.k.a. fast. Yes, these are the Pegasus boots. They are quite useful for zipping around Hyrule, so I won't be killing myself to move forward nearly as often. I didn't say I would never do it again, though, so suicide time. This is when I let someone kill me because it makes me go to my house. Or, in this case, the sanctuary. Because we're going to get a piece of heart that is to the west of the sanctuary. It's not to the east. Don't go right. Go left. And there, I'm just showing off the Pegasus boots. If you hold A for a short time, you'll start dashing. You move four times as fast as normal walking because normal walking is one pixel per frame the Pegasus boots moves you four pixels per frame and if you're a speedrunner it's only twice as fast because the initial time when you press the direction on a d-pad it moves you two pixels that frame so if you keep tapping the d-pad you'll actually move slightly faster when walking but it's a pain in the butt to do so yeah, I'm just going to walk around normally or use the Pegasus boots. I'm I'm no Cosmo. <laughs> and if you watch speedruns, you'll know who that is. He's amazing. I mean, he doesn't actually speedrun this game, so I don't know why I'm referencing him. He mainly does, Wind Waker. But other YouTubers aside, you're going to want to go into Kakariko Village. Because it is a convenient path to where you really need to be. And that is the library. Yep, we gonna give you some book learning. A.K.A. we're gonna get the book of Mudora. Um, this is essentially a Hylian to English dictionary because you use it to translate runes, which allows you to get certain items later in the game. It doesn't actually translate it for the player to read and then do a puzzle from that. That'd be pretty cool. It, well, I don't remember. Does it do it at one point in the game? Either way, it's not for the first use we're gonna have. It's just... You read it and then you assume Link does what it says and it makes some big grand thing happen. And now that we have that, we are, I think, yeah, I want to go to the Desert Temple because, well, that's how I advance the plot and the plot is important because without the plot there wouldn't be a story. And that's all great for Mario games and games where you just go through levels, which I enjoy, but this is very plot based. Not really. But the gameplay is amazing, so who cares? Nah, I'm just joking. I do like the lore of The Legend of Zelda. Not as much as the lore of The Lord of the Rings, but that's just because that's one of the greatest tales ever told. It's almost as good as the tale of the time I went to the store and bought some chocolate. Yeah, I didn't just buy a piece of chocolate, I bought two pieces. Anyways, when you got up to this point, you were going to want to equip the Book of Mudora and use it, and that will cause a big cutscene when it goes black, except right around you. And in a bit, those thinginamajigginers, yes, not thingamajiggers, it is a thinginamajigginer, yes, that's how you spell it, are going to rotate around you. Just like the vulture. And I really hope it doesn't hit me during this cutscene, because you are unimmobile while those are moving. It's kind of stupid that you're immobile, but you are. And now we're entering the second temple of, not temple, but dungeon of the game, the Desert Temple. Yes, the Desert Temple is not technically a temple. I only consider the temples the one after the one half point. You know what I mean. Most Zelda games are put up into, you have a couple of dungeons early in the game before the real story happens. Then, then the feces hits the fan, and you're like, oh crap, 
kind of like going to Adult Link in The Legend of Zelda, getting the map, well, not Legend of Zelda, in Ocarina of Time, they're all Legend of Zelda, getting the Master Sword in Wind Waker, among others. Now, you're going to want to head south from that second egg, well, second exit of the dungeon, and get a heart, piece of heart, which just happened to finish a heart container for me. Sorry about the indigestion. I just ate pretzels. I like pretzels. Anyways, you're going to want to, from there, head all the way north into a room, and Pegasus Budify the torch. By that, I mean run into it with your sword, and it'll knock a key down. I don't know why that's called Pegasus Budifying, but it is. Oh, and if you head north here, you can get the map. The map isn't required, but, eh, it, this is a 100% playthrough. I'm kind of required to show it on principle. Maybe useless. Well, if you know the game as well as I do, it's useless. But if you don't, you learn from it. And yes, the two unlit torches next on the pedestal are a red herring. You actually need to lift up the pot and step on the switch. Now from here you want to head all the way east and then go south. As opposed to heading east, then going west, then you just end up where you started, if you travel the same distance both ways. And if you open up this chest, you will get the compas. Now I'm going to defeat all the enemies because I gotta head north to get something. And while I'm doing that and heading north, I'm going to ask you the comment question of the day. Today's comment question is, what's your favorite musical instrument? Mine is the tuba, of course followed closely, or not closely, but very far second would be tied for the organ, the Ophiclide, and the Chapman Stick. Those things are awesome. Okay, now that we have the big key, as opposed to a small key, I think they're just called, yeah, small keys. There are a bunch of them, big keys. There are still a bunch of them, because there's a bunch of ton dungeons, but... There's only one per dungeon, so they're much more rare. And here you're gonna get the Titan's Mitt, or the Power Mitt. Yeah, different names. Come on, not just enemy nomenclature should be universal, all video game nomenclature should be useful. A strength up should be for doing more damage. It should not be for carrying more. You should name yourself after very large mythological creatures, such as a titan. I don't know. I'm crazy. And I hope you guys didn't hear that fall. Now you're going to want to exit out the exit I showed you again that where we got the heart piece, because this is how you get to the last part, last-ish part of the dungeon. And from here, you're going to want to push the middle block on the right side in a direction. But first, you're not going to want to get shot in the face by the laser because those hurt and now it's gonna be epic dodging skills because I'm amazing and it as I said it still works much better to just hit the tiles with your sword or throw a pot at them it's much more effective but I don't do what's effective I do what makes me look like a bad A now I'm just joking I want to be I wear my seatbelt. I'm, I'm not a... I don't go for danger all the time. Anyways, once you defeat all the enemies in that room, you will be permitted to head east. Once you get to this room, you don't have to defeat all the enemies, but I do it. Because I go one step beyond. And apparently I also die. Um, but it does spawn you right at the beginning of that section, so I'm not gonna cut it out. Mainly because... Uh, I feel lazy, but I'll try to find another reason in editing. Anyways, getting back to where I was, or the room before where I was. When you defeat these guys, you might get money. Money is useful because it lets you buy things, and sometimes you're required to buy things. So maybe dying wasn't all that bad. I just got a red rupee from one defeating one of those enemies. Maybe I'm getting rewarded for dying. I mean, that's like a game saying, Hey, you suck, let me reward you. Oh, wait. Nintendo kind of does that. The super guide in the 
in Super Mario 3D Land is retarded, or Super Mario, New Super Mario Bros. Wii is retarded. So is the white Tanuki Leaf in Super Mario 3D Land. It should not, I mean, the P, I know what people are saying, it's kind of like the P-Wing is in, no it's not. But people say, well the P-Wing let you skip levels. Yes, and there were only a certain amount in the entire game. And you worked to get them. Well, most of them. I'm looking at you, white mushroom houses. But they were a reward. This is just a, hey, you suck. It's really painful to watch you play this badly. So, here is a white leaf. So you don't have to stop playing badly. You can just play badly with immense ability. Come on, games. Leave it up to cheat codes. And now we are already to the boss of this dungeon, so yes, we are successfully going right from the end of one dungeon to the end of another in one episode. That's kind of exciting. But this is Lan Mola, I think. Yeah, that's his name. I don't always remember this boss's name a lot because, well, I think it's kind of stupid. It's like, yeah, I'm a boss. You know what my name is? Lan Mola. It's, it's not a very threatening name, it's like, who are you? I'm Lon Mola. Oh, okay, it's like, there's Twin Rover, and Goma, and Lon Mola. See, it, it, it sounds kind of stupid. Nintendo come up with more threatening boss names. Think of the horror movies. They call someone Freddy. Now that I think about it, that's not really a scary name. It's like, what's your name? Freddy! It's not really too threatening. Unless Freddy's like a pedophile name. And when you defeat all but one of them, when it comes up, it will shoot out more than the four diagonals. It will shoot in the cardinal directions and the diagonals. The rocks which damage you, so don't get hit by them. I really don't want to get hit by them either because I'm at one heart. That would really be bad if I got murder faced. Yes, that is a new word, murder faced. It is when someone kills you on purpose as opposed to accidentally stabbing you in the arm multiple times and then finding out you have. Oh crap, I'm dead. Cutting ahead. Okay, there's only one left again. And, where was I? I think I was talking about how someone was stabbing you multiple times in the arm. And then I was thinking, but you guys wouldn't think that'd be deadly. Unless, you're a, what's it called? A hemophiliac, yeah. Because I have, there's someone in the band at my school. And I just got a pin, and it's fun threatening him, like, he's... He's older than me, he knows I'm just joking, but it's like, I will poke you with this pin, and you will die. Because you will bleed to death, even though the hole is literally just a pinprick. It must really stink to skin his knees. It's like, right in the back, skin my knees, oh, I'm gonna die! But he has medicine for that. And hey, we've beat the dungeon! Uh, well, this was... Not too unexpected, but it is exciting. Next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda, a link to the past, we're going to get more stuff done. See you guys then.